On March 26, 2024, at 1.28 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, disaster struck Baltimore. A massive container ship lost power and crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing a catastrophic collapse into the Patapsco River. This tragedy not only took the lives of six construction workers, but also sparked nationwide concerns over the safety of our infrastructure. Was the bridge's design robust enough for today's challenges? We look into the tragedy at Francis Scott Key to see how it has raised new worries about the way construction and engineering are done across the country. We'll also talk about other well-known building disasters over the years, such as the Hyatt Regency walkway collapse that killed many, and the current Surfside condominium disaster. What can we learn from these building mistakes about how to stop disasters from happening again? When Francis Scott Key Bridge opened 47 years ago, a local newspaper praised it as an engineering marvel with some of the most spectacular views in Maryland. People in Baltimore were proud of their new bridge, even though it took longer than planned to build and cost a lot more than expected. Tuesday at 1.30 a.m. with a nearly full moon and clear skies, a 213 million pound cargo ship almost as long as the Eiffel Tower hit a key support column and instantly destroyed large parts of the bridge. Engineers build bridges that are strong and can handle different kinds of impacts like those from ships. However, the Delhi was not a normal ship. It was a cargo ship that weighed about one third to one half of the Empire State Building. Plus, the key bridge was built in 1977, a time when rules were different and ships were much smaller. The key bridge would have been able to last if it had been built to today's standards. Modern bridges, designed in the age of ultra-large shipping containers, are typically built with stronger piers or protection systems around the piers that can either absorb or deflect the force of ship collisions. In the aftermath, questions arise about the future of bridge safety and engineering standards. The collapse has sparked discussions on retrofitting older bridges with modern defensive systems. The Baltimore Bridge is not the only example of lessons learned that shape the future of engineering and construction practices. Throughout history, tragedies have helped shape how construction and engineering are done today in the US and other parts of the world. On July 17, 1981, a festive evening at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in Kansas City turned tragic when its walkways collapsed. Hundreds of guests were dancing when the second, third and fourth floor walkways suddenly fell, killing 114 people and injuring over 200. This disaster became one of the deadliest structural collapses in US history. The collapse shocked the nation. Emergency teams rushed to the scene working tirelessly to rescue survivors and recover those who were lost. The community mourned deeply as family and friends grappled with the sudden and heartbreaking loss of their loved ones. Investigators found that a design change during construction had overloaded the walkway's support rods. This critical oversight was the main reason for the collapse. As a result of this tragedy, changes in engineering and construction practices, building codes and safety standards were made, such as stricter peer review requirements for complex structures. Now, independent experts had to review and approve designs before builders could start construction. The new building codes ensured that all engineering designs could handle extra stress. The tragedy also pushed engineers to prioritize public safety over all other concerns. Engineering programs began emphasizing ethics and the real-world effects of engineering decisions. The Hyatt Regency collapse became a key case study for teaching the importance of thorough design checks and ethical practices. The legal outcomes were also significant. Families of the victims received compensation, 140 million US dollars, and stricter regulations were put in place to hold parties accountable for such failures. This increased legal responsibility prompted firms to follow safety protocols more closely. Unfortunately, no matter how much people learn from these tragedies, negligence continues to be the leading cause of such disasters. It's why even decades after the Hyatt Regency Hotel walkway collapsed, 
we still continue to see construction disasters like Surfside condominium collapse in Florida. Early in the morning on June 24, 2021, part of the Champlain Towers South building in Surfside, Florida collapsed. A once bustling apartment building turned into a sad scene when this happened, crushing or trapping people under a huge pile of bent metal and concrete. The fall killed 98 people and shocked the whole country, which led to a lot of research into what went wrong. Investigators found that the building's integrity had likely been compromised during its construction in the 1970s, as some parts did not meet the building code standards of that time. Surfside Commissioner Marianne Meischeid stated, The design and construction did not meet all the safety standards of its day. Investigators came up with different ways that the columns holding the southern edge of the tower could have failed, causing their weight to be spread out unevenly and causing the building to fall. They also found that the slab that supported the pool deck had collapsed four minutes before the tower itself came down. The building was in bad shape and needed major fixes even before it fell. In April 2021, the head of the condo association told residents that the concrete was quickly getting worse. The association had agreed to spend $15 million on repairs, but the work didn't start until two years later. The fact that this delay happened shows how important it is to keep every building in good shape. As a result of this tragedy, Florida's local governments, such as Miami-Dade County, started to make building inspection rules tougher. For example, Miami-Dade County changed its rules so that buildings need to be recertified every 30 years instead of every 40 years. The state of Florida also made changes to its rules to make condo buildings safer. Senate Bill 4D mandates stricter inspections and requires condo associations to reserve funds for necessary repairs. The strict changes and safety measures that were put in place in Florida show that the whole world needs to act quickly to stop structures from falling down. In another part of the world, the Lotus Riverside Complex in Shanghai also fell apart in a very dramatic way which also calls for accountability and improved construction practices. China, known for its unprecedented construction speed and efficiency, leads the world in scaling up its housing and infrastructure to meet the needs of its unstopping growing population. In 2021 alone, the country constructed over 6 million residential properties. Yet this impressive growth often comes at a cost. The rush to build quickly and profitably sometimes leads to compromised quality, setting the stage for potential disasters. The Lotus Riverside tragedy occurred on June 27, 2009, when a massive 13-storey building toppled to the ground, miraculously avoiding damage to nearby buildings, but claiming the life of a worker named Zhao, who had entered the building to retrieve his tools. The collapse, which left the building lying on its side with doors and windows almost intact, became a shocking sight and sparked outrage among the 500 home buyers. Many of these individuals had invested their life savings and now demanded full refunds and compensation from Shanghai Maidu Real Estate Development, the project's developer. Investigations revealed no natural causes behind the collapse. Rather, it was faulty construction practices to blame. The building had been supported by precast concrete piles that were not strong enough for such a tall structure, a method already outlawed due to its known risks, yet shockingly used at the time. Massive digging for a parking garage and poorly managed pileups of dug up dirt also put a lot of stress on the building's base. The inadequate management made the whole structure unstable, which eventually, led to its collapse. Better yet, the company Shanghai Zhongxin Construction, which was working on the Lotus Riverside Residential, was told of the danger by the company hired to watch over the project. After the building fell, nine bosses from the construction company Shanghai Zhongxin Construction were arrested. This building collapse was a harsh reminder of how dangerous it is to sacrifice quality for speed and it led to a national call in China for higher building standards. 
A similar tale of neglect unfolded in Genoa, Italy. The Ponte Mirandi Bridge, a vital artery for the region, succumbed to years of deterioration. Can you imagine driving across a bridge, trusting in its strength, only to find it collapsing beneath you? That's what happened in the tragic collapse of Italy's Pont Mirandi Bridge. On a stormy day in August 2018, the bridge suddenly collapsed under the weight of its traffic. Vehicles and their passengers plummeted to the ground below, turning a routine commute into a scene of devastation. This catastrophe claimed the lives of 43 people and injured many others. What hidden flaws led to such a devastating incident? Investigations into the collapse revealed that three terrible things all worked together to cause the disaster. The concrete used to build the bridge was breaking down, the steel cables that held the structure together were severely corroded, and finally, the bridge wasn't getting enough maintenance. In the end, it was a stretch of bad weather that caused the catastrophic failure, which showed these weaknesses and caused the tragic fall. After the accident, the Italian government moved quickly to find out who was responsible. According to the investigations, the company that was in charge of the bridge had not done any proper upkeep for a long time. Even though there were many signs that the bridge was getting worse, the necessary repairs were always put off. Because of this, several executives from the running company were sued. Italy then rethought how it handled infrastructure safety because it knew that the whole system needed to change. The government made building rules stricter and started inspecting old infrastructure all over the country more closely. Finally, in two years, a new bridge was built with safety and stability in mind at all times. The Geneva San Giorgio Bridge was built quickly and opened on August 3, 2020. It met current engineering standards and has advanced technology to monitor its health in real time. This new bridge not only shows how strong Genoa is, but it also shows how much the city has learned from its mistakes. As we've seen today, the collapse of structures like Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge and others from our past serve as harsh reminders of what can happen when safety and diligence in engineering practices are overlooked. These tragedies aren't just isolated incidents. They are wake-up calls that highlight ongoing challenges and the necessity for continual improvement in our approaches to building and maintaining our infrastructure. Each disaster has spurred changes, stricter regulations, advancements in materials, and a renewed focus on ethical engineering practices. But the question remains, are we doing enough? Comment below on how you think structural safety can be further improved. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and thank you for joining us on this important exploration. See you in the next one.